if you if you are still have the thoughts, still have the beliefs, and yet you still make conclusions about how you think a spiritual person would act. And so you kind of try to act like a spiritual person would act or should act, there's still going to be a sense of fear or a, there's an awkwardness about it, trying to play the role or act it out. And so what's interesting is a lot of times I would just have people, I would talk with people who would say things like, oh, I really am feeling more and more fearless and so I don't lock my car anymore. And I'd say, well, how's that experience going for you? When you go to town and you park your car and you don't lock it, how how does it feel? And, and they say, well, I'm, I'm still a little concerned. And I say, well, what does that feel like? Well, when I go about to the bank or to the grocery store to do my errands, I still think about the car. And I think about it, it's just sitting there unlocked. Uh, almost like it's an invitation asking somebody to come come in or something like this and everything. So I, I said, so so that's where you have to really start to take a look at it. If, if you have continuing concern and you keep thinking about the car that you didn't lock, then there is a fear underneath and then that fear has to be looked at. Because it's, you don't get any like brownie points. It's not like Jesus is going, very good, you've been away from that car for 15 minutes. <laughs> like, oh, extra brownie points for you, you know. You don't, you don't get any brownie points. It's just, it's more like self-honesty. How do I feel? How do I really feel? That's the, that's our barometer. You know, if we still have continuing concern. There's another part in the course, in the manual, and you know, for teachers where the line, the question comes to Jesus, should healing be repeated? Mm -hmm. And basically it's the same thing, as long, if you pray for a healing and, and then you have continuing concerns about whether the healing has actually happened, or you pray for a healing and you keep watch out with your five senses, your, your eyes, to, to keep a close look out for symptoms, then he says, you know, you need to come back inside. And, and it's not the patient that needs more healing, it's your own mind. If you have continuing concern about a healing, then it's your opportunity to go to the Holy Spirit and ask for, for help ask for another way to see this. So, so when we talk about fear or subtle concerns and so on and so forth, you know, that's the subtlety of the belief that there can be gradations of, of happiness or gradations of peace or gradations of fear. Uh, and really, it's much, much more direct. It's, it's, Every, what is not love is, is fear, and there aren't all those degrees and gradations. And when you, you notice yourself in, in a sense of minor fearfulness, that's the same opportunity as intense rage and fury. Just a little bit of annoyance, a little bit of upset, is, is a perfect opportunity for healing. It's a perfect opportunity to just you might say, fine-tune your mind-watching and realize that if you're a little bit annoyed or a little bit upset, that's, that's still not peace. And the ego will tend to just minimalize that and say, oh, it's not that bad. But it's worth, you're, you're worth it, is what the, the message is underneath it. You're worth that mind-watching, mind-training. There's a line to it, Jesus says, beware of, of the of the temptation that, that you, that, or beware of the shabby belief, he calls it, the shabby belief that neither you or anyone else is worth, worth constant effort. So it's a call into vigilance. It's 
Um, so when it's a big drama thing, it's easy to feel the fear, like that it needs to be resolved and everything, because it's right in your face and you feel like bodily. Like, it's, but when it's these needling little things, and um, I'm sensing that around me, these little things. How do you work with the fear in that regard? Because it's not as big; it's very small. How do you work with it when it's that small? That's my question. Yeah, if it, if it seems small, it's it seems maybe we'll say it's more subtle. But um, you start with the feelings, and then you you take it down. Do you have do you have an example of something that's kind of a just well, very subtle? Yeah, it's interesting because we were talking about the car. I was in the group, <laughs> and so I was the one that locked my car up. You know, and I noticed I'd been doing that, but there was nothing really of value in there, just some clothes and shoes. So I put my purse in there, unlocked the car, and rolled down the window <laughs> to let it air. But like you said, my thoughts are with the car still. So I'm thinking about that. It's and there's fear there. It's nothing big. But it's also like I'm thinking about my wallet, about my visa, you know, like if somebody stole it, I have to do this, I have to do that. Yeah. So this is a very practical experience for me. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing big, there's no drama. But it is small, like it's it's the same as you were saying, like between a big drama and a small little thing. But it's activated that concern. So how do I now work with that? Yeah. I could say there's a line that comes to mind from the Course that says, whenever you feel the need to become defensive about anything, you have identified yourself with an illusion. So when we feel, even if it's a little bit of, just a thought that comes every once in a while, or a mild concern, or a little bit of mild worry, nothing <coughs> intense, just a little bit of minor worry, if you follow that, those thoughts down, what you will follow them down to is a, is a self-concept or an image that was made to take the place of the spiritual reality or the spiritual self. So the, the guidance and the prompts that we receive from the Holy Spirit are designed to unwind or unravel us from that make-believe self-concept, to really wash it away. Like through the rinse cycle, just wash it and wash and wash until the stain is gone. Um, an example is, like years ago I was on a, taking a trip uh, east from Cincinnati up through Ohio and through Pennsylvania towards the east coast and I had two friends with me and we stopped on our way up Ohio from Cincinnati, we stopped around Columbus and had lunch and then we drove across and I think we were just getting ready to head over to the next state, which I believe is West Virginia, and we pulled in to get some gas, and um, the two ladies I was traveling with went inside to go to the restroom or whatever, and then I paid, and when I came out to the car, I could just see it on their faces. It was not a, a happy sight at all. They, they both looked concerned and, and uh, worried and so forth. I said, well, what's happening? What's going on? And my friend uh, Resta had said, um, well, I, I lost my purse, um, and I don't know where it is. She was kind of trying to go back in her mind to the different places we had stopped. We had stopped maybe for gas or a rest area, stopped for lunch and this and that. We'd probably been driving for maybe four and a half hours. So she had quite a lot of concern. And so we were just getting ready to pull out of the, the service station, <coughs> the gas station, and I said, well, I think we just, I'll just pull the car over and let's just go into prayer and meditation. That seems to be the most helpful thing. So we did, pulled over, we went into prayer for two or three minutes, and then she just burst into laughter uh, after few minutes of the meditation, I said, what happened? And she said, well, Jesus appeared to me in my meditation, and he was wearing my purse. <laughs> it was a green purse, and Jesus had it on his shoulder. And so she laughed, and so that was the symbol the, of 
of the opening to healing in a sense that it was kind of like the, the symbol for her was, don't worry, I got your purse. Uh, don't be concerned at all. You know, on his shoulder, I got you, literally, I'm wearing your purse, I got your purse, so don't be concerned. Go on your trip and shine your light and enjoy it. And then I, I said, okay, was there any other feelings that came with it? And um, she said, oh, I can't think of any. And I said, um, I'm getting a feeling that you're to uh, call your husband back in Cincinnati. And she said, oh, ooh, she, her face kind of winced at the thought of calling her, her husband. She was in the process, they were in the process of separating. And just the very thought of calling him and saying, the purse isn't here, I don't know where the purse is. My feeling was just, just inform him so that if somebody finds the purse or whatever and they call, uh, with the contact information in there, that there'll, there'll be somebody there that knows what's going on. And she was like, oh, because that's where it started to get at, at how the purse could be used, is that there was a bit of a distance, I don't want to call him, I don't want to be embarrassed, he'll tell me, you dummy, uh, you know, he'll give me the third degree if I call him and just tell him about this. And yet that seemed to be, those were the niggling little thoughts that had to get exposed that she didn't want to expose with her husband. And so, but when we prayed on it, the guidance was to do that. She did call, she did kind of share, share it all with him and everything, and then we continued on the trip. And we, we made it all the way to the East Coast, I think, to do a Course in Miracles retreat, gathering there on the East Coast, and uh, sure enough, somebody, she had left it at a Wendy's uh, in Columbus, and somebody had got in there and, on oh, it was her, some piece of information had called her husband and said, we found this person, and yet it was used as kind of a backdrop for exposing private thoughts. That's how it works. It's not that things happen to us good or bad in the world, it's just that everything is an opportunity for us to expose the fears, expose the doubts, expose the beliefs, and learn to not judge the form, which we're been accustomed to taking things on, taking it personally, feeling bad, feeling like we're not worthy of, of being. Um, and so these things are just real backdrops. So, in that sense, it's, it's good. You can see that that really serves. Because there's one level, which is what seems to be happening in form, and then there's the level of the mind, which is, is where you have to pay close attention to those thoughts and feelings and emotions. And if you do it enough, then you'll find that they merge, that, that it seems like there's a world outside the mind, but it's not actually not out there. It's actually, it's, it's synonymous with mind. It's, it's like in The Course in Miracles when Jesus says, all illness is mental illness. He, he's really saying that all problems are of the mind, that you actually do not have any physical problems. You don't really have interpersonal relationship problems, you don't really have health issues with the body, you don't really have issues with what could happen to you with the environment or whatever. It's all mental. But it takes a lot of mind training to experience that it's all mental, and yet that's what you want to do, is practice with whatever is arising. Because that's how you're convinced, in the end, that it's all mental. So that's good.